All right, the recipe. Are you all doing the fa for the first time? Yeah, okay, some of you are. Are we gonna cook the chicken? Is it 100% chicken class today or would you like to also know, would you like to also know about the tofu? Give me a thumbs up if you would like to know about the tofu as well. Amazing, so what I have today is, I got the silken tofu. That is a good one for using in the broth. And I have got the chicken breast if you're doing chicken. So I will explain those steps when we get to it, okay? Wonderful, wonderful. So we will start going through our recipe and through our ingredients. I will hold them up in front of the camera so you can actually see the colorful foods. I will start going from top to bottom. I got these rice noodles. Make sure you have everything in front of you ready to go. They are perfect flat rice noodles for the pho broth. Then we are working with peppercorns for different kinds of spices. So I've got the nice peppercorns here. And then we have the coriander seeds and we will use the star anise. Beautiful, beautiful. It smells very strong. Give it a good smell. If, you, if you're working with your fresh, Fresh spices always give them a good smell. It's incredible. They're so strong and beautiful. All right, those are the spices we're gonna work with. Then we're gonna use some fresh ginger. Got some fresh ginger. We will use some jalapeno. If you are already eating spicy, you can use jalapeno. And then there's some red chilies as well. We will use some lime in the end for making it nice and tangy, our recipe. Then what else do we have in freshness? Some Thai basil, if you could find that in the markets or the shops. Otherwise, normal basil will do as well. It's very similar in flavor, but also quite different. If you can see the leaf shape as well, it reminds you of basil. Give it a good smell, it's beautiful. And then we're using fresh green onion, or you can call it spring onion, or you can call it shallots, depending where you're from. These ones, we are using fresh coriander as well, not just the coriander seeds, but also fresh coriander. It looks very similar to flat leaf parsley, but smells very different. If you are not, some people don't like coriander, you can just leave it out. It's no problem. And we are gonna use some fresh bean sprouts. These ones are soybean sprouts that I have prepared here. I gave all of my vegetables and fresh spices a good wash. A nice trick when you're washing herbs or salads or leafy greens, for example, what I did with the coriander here, um, is if you don't wash it in running water, but you actually fill a bowl of water and you just wash it in that because then the water will get nicely in between the leaves and the sand and the soil can wash off. Okay, so those are our fresh ingredients. What we also will use is some chicken broth. I have the chicken stock with reduced salt. You can make your own chicken stock, obviously, if that's what you brought today. And some sauces for the end for seasoning. Instead of fish sauce, you can also use oyster sauce. It's not a problem at all. Then we've got some hoisin sauce. And again, if you like spicy, sriracha sauce or after. And that should be all of our ingredients. And now we can make our beautiful, magical soup. We will start by soaking our noodles because they will take a couple of minutes to get nice and soft. So get it, grab, grab a big bowl and unwrap your noodles. I'm gonna use this one. Get your noodles out of the packet. Place them in your bowl. And then cover them with some hot water. It doesn't need to be boiling. It's best actually if your water is not boiling. And 
we're going to put it to the side. You can put a lid on it or you can leave the lid away. I'm just going to grab my hot water. Put one back in. All right, I'm going to pour the water on top. If you're using a metal bowl and you're putting warm water inside, remember that metal is very, a very great heat transmitter. So touch it with some mittens or on the top rim because the metal will heat up. All right, there we go. My noodles are now in the hot water and I will put them to the side and we will come back to this later. Beautiful. Next step will be toasting our beautiful dried spices. So I will take my lid off the pot. I will need the lid a bit later on and grab your three spices. If you want, if you're leaving your place and it's easier for you with walking, just mix them already in one, um, in one bowl together. You're gonna need a tablespoon. If you're making the same amount that it is in the recipe, you will need a tablespoon of the spices. So basically, you just grab a full spoon like this and then pour it into the pot. You can combine them all already in one little bowl. If you're doubling your portions, just double all the measurements that you're using, okay? Okay, I'm gonna turn on my stove top here. So that's gonna get nice and hot. For toasting, when we say we're toasting something, we're actually not frying it. So we won't need any oil. We're actually doing that in, the, in a dry pan, a very hot pan. And when we're toasting our seeds or any herbs or seeds, then we need to keep, keep them moving because otherwise they can burn really, really quickly and we don't want them to burn. We just want them a little bit toasted because then the flavors inside them change also. Okay. Now my pan is getting really hot. I can feel it already. And I will put in a tablespoon Black peppercorns. I will put in a tablespoon of the coriander seeds. And I will put in some beautiful, like a, if you measure it out with a spoon, you got some really lovely ones. Because they would look pretty. And add that as well and a seed. And I'm going to move them. You can already quickly, actually the flavors come out really fast. You stick your nose over the pot. It's so strong and lovely. Make sure you regulate your heat depending on what kind of stove top you're using. You don't want to burn your, your dried spices. Nice and fragrant. Keep an eye on them. The anise seed and the peppercorns are quite dark, but you can see when you're looking at your coriander seeds, you will see if they're changing color. If they're getting really dark quickly, you gotta turn off your heat. Turn it down. All right, we're not gonna go too far. Mine are almost done here. They're starting to crackle. All right, I'm going to turn off my heat now. Turn it off, leave them in there. And we're going to prepare the green onions. Got a few here. I'm 
we will add them to the pot. What we're using at the start, we're going to use all of our green onion, the white bits and the green bits. Okay, all right, I will chop, chop off the roots because we definitely won't use the roots like this. Hope you can see me. I'll put the roots to the side and then I will go like 10 centimeters, depending how much green you have, go up to here and I will chop it again. And these are the bits that we are going to use in our broth, the green, the light green and the white parts, okay? And you can throw them into your pot as well. I'm going to do the same, my other three. Here we go. Like that much, add them in there. And then we have the ginger. And we're going to grate the ginger. I have it here with the peel, a nice fresh piece. Are you all using fresh ginger or do you have the minced ginger in the in the jar? Fresh ginger, beautiful. You can hold in the camera if you want to show me. Really fragrant. If you stick your nose over the pot, it smells so beautiful. All of those toasted seeds and the added green onions. Okay, I will show you two ways. If you're happy to chop your ginger really fine, you can do that. Here you go, thin pieces and put them in the pot. Now with the ginger, you can regulate it yourself, how much you like ginger, whether you want add in more or less, because this is for the spices, when you work with spices and the far is a broth basically that is built on spices, you can decide for yourself how many you want to you add. So the measurements that you have in the recipe, is just a little guidance. So if you feel like, oh, I want to add more of this because it smells so good and I love the flavor, go for it. It's totally your choice. I'm going to chop a little bit more of the ginger. I do love ginger, the flavor of it. I think it goes so well in Asian dishes. That's why I will add a little bit more. So I chopped it into fine slices, thin slices, and then into strips. Like this, fine strips. Can you see? If you have questions at any point, please don't hesitate to ask. Always, always ask questions. All right, I took a big knob of the ginger, so I think this is now going to be enough for my broth. It's just a little bit more than a five centimeter piece. Adding the water, so put your pot back on a little bit now because we're adding the water. If you add in warm water, that will save you the temperature dropping in your pot and it will go straight into integrating all the flavors. So if you have warm water, add it, and then we're going to also add the chicken stock. Okay.
Okay. Chat. Okay. So for the water, we have four cups. If you're doing the measurements that it says in the ingredients, I'm not sure for how many people you're cooking. If it is for four people, the recommendation is right now to use four cups of water. Ooh. And then we're going to use eight cups of the chicken broth. One liter is four cups. So I have one liter of chicken broth I'm adding now. Yeah. For your broth to get to a nice high heat again, if you have used warm water. Do now is prepare our chicken. When you work with poultry in the kitchen, it's always a great idea to use a separate chopping board. So in our house, this is our red chopping board. So we know raw chicken always gets chopped on this board. It's just for safety. Okay. And chicken. Chicken. Two at a time. Before I put it in, I will just chop off a few of these white fatty bits. Always make sure you wash your hands after. When you're working with raw chicken, wash your hands before. I mean, you should always wash your hands before you cook and especially after. Okay, so once our... That's heating up nicely. I can see how my water is, the broth is really moving here. So for me, it's now a good time. Same for you if you can see how it's heating up. And fine little bubbles are starting to develop on the top. You can start adding your chicken. What we're going to do, we're just going to drop it in gently. So I'm going to take one of the breasts, just the way it is. I'm going to add it to the broth. Drop it in. I'm going to take the second one as well and drop it into the broth. And now the lid will come in handy to retain the heat inside the pot. I will put the lid on top now. Always keep an eye on the pot because once it starts cooking, you want to bring it down a little bit to simmer. We don't want it to boil over the sides. Okay. The chicken needs to stay in there for at least five minutes because we want it to be cooked all the way through. Because with chicken, compared to any other meat, we can't eat chicken raw. Chicken needs to be cooked all the way through. So while it's cooking, we can have a look if we have a right bowl ready to grab our chicken out of the pot when it's done because we will tear it apart like a pulled pork. So it's going to be like pulled chicken, tear it apart and it will come apart really nicely and softly with a fork once it's cooked in the broth. Okay, so make sure that you have a nice little bowl grabbing your chicken later. And what will happen with the broth when it's cooked? We will run it through a sieve to retain all of the big parts and just keep the see-through flavorsome broth itself because that is what we will put into our bowl, into our dish in the end. So we won't be eating the seeds of the spices and the big green parts of the spring onion. Also not the ginger, just the fine broth. So you can use any kind of sieve that you have at home that you're comfortable using and pour it into a, a different pot. Okay. 
this is a great time so we're not watching water boil to cut up our ingredients for the dish later on because the beautiful thing about a farm is actually that you can add the ingredients to your bowl that you like so you will chop them up now put them in some nice bowls put them on the table and then when everybody gathers around your dinner table everybody can pick and choose their own little ingredients so we can start chopping up the green onion when you're chopping and using a large knife it's always great to keep the tip pointed down and then just work downwards like a lever and if you're working with a short knife just normally back and forth like a saw i will cut my large green onions in half so it's easier to hold them for me they'll fit easier on the chopping board and then i will start chopping them from one side to the other like this so depending on how you're comfortable with your knife and how experienced you are choose the knife that you're comfortable with and then take your time just chopping it's all about safety as well and the pleasure of working with your ingredients so while you're chopping it you can smell use all your senses to take it in All right, these guys are done. I will put them in a nice bowl over here, the table later on. With the coriander, you don't actually have to chop it. You can just leave your coriander even in a nice little jar, put that in the center of the table and everyone can just pluck it off if that's what you like. If not, you can pluck a few corianders yourself, just like that with your finger. Pluck those leaves off. And then everyone can add that to their soup as well. You can make them as short as you like, but pluck them all the way down the stem so you've got a bigger piece, or you make them a little bit smaller. And then have them ready to go as well. The next lovely ingredient to use when your soup is ready is the lime. All right, got to turn off my pot here and bring it to simmer. So keep an eye on your pot so it doesn't boil over because we want that broth to stay inside and cook the chicken nicely. It's turning white slowly. Mmm, it smells really lovely. More minutes. My chicken breasts were quite thick, so mine will probably take longer than five minutes to cook. All right, how do we slice, slice the lime for our dish? Cut it in half first, and we cut it this way. So from the tip to the bottom, so we cut it in half as if we would squeeze it, for example, like oranges, if you want to squeeze it for a juice, we won't get the wedges as nice because we want in the end to have some nice wedges like this. So we can grab them and squeeze it on top of our soup. Okay. Nice little bowl ready for the lime wedges. anyone working with chilies today or jalapenos are you going to add them in the end sometimes you can get some sweet ones as well so they will be great for just some flavor and they won't be too spicy all right i've got those peppers now i'm going to give them a quick chop
My broth is bubbling away here. Looking great. Just got to turn that down a little bit. Always keep your eye on the broth so it doesn't boil over. Now, if you are not using your chicken and you're working with tofu, you just let your broth boil the way it is because you're not adding the tofu to the broth. The tofu is used just fresh the way it is and just add it to the dish itself in the bowl. So if you're working with the silken tofu, all you got to do to prepare it is you open your packet. So simple and straightforward with tofu. Hang on, I just want to open it on the correct side. Let me have a look. So there was one person that was working with, with the tofu. Let me know. Exactly. Beautiful. Let me know if you're ready to work with the tofu. Beautiful. So open it up. So the silken tofu is quite a soft tofu, but firm at the same time. All right. This won't work. I'll have to use my knife. Gently cut it along the sides. And then it will be a large piece inside it. Sometimes you can get tofu and it's already chopped in little squares. But this one is like this and it's full of liquid. Leave the liquid, you don't have to drain it because if you're not using all of it, it's a great way of storing it in the fridge. So what you're gonna do, is you're going in with your knife and you're chopping little cubes. So first, doing stripes, that way, and then perpendicular, the other way. And when it's time to serve, you can grab a little spoon and pick out your tofu pieces and add them to your broth. Because you don't want to overhandle your tofu, otherwise it will just start falling apart again. So that will be it. Just before you're going to serve your soup, you can add your tofu pieces. Now, I need to have a look at the chicken. And I will rub it out with some tongs and have a look inside if it's cooked already all the way through. It's been in there for quite a, quite a few minutes. It looks really great, so I'm just going to check. This is a really thick piece, unusually thick, so that might need much longer than the other one. All right. What I will do is I will cut it halfway through right in the middle, see if it's still pink. Oh, it's very pink. Guys, if you want to have a look, if your chicken still looks like this, put it back into your broth because it still needs a little bit. This is okay. If you feel like your broth is not cooking the same speed, faster or slower. Every stove is different. So don't worry about it. This is not, this is not something that needs to be all simultaneously. Now this one's already much better. It's pretty much done. It probably needs another two minutes and that's it. But I will put the smaller piece back inside as well because we don't want it thick. There we go.
and put my ball back to the side. Broth is boiling away. Now, a few minutes, more than 20 have passed for our noodles. While the broth and the chicken is still boiling, we can have a look at our noodles. So I have me in front of me. And if you look at the difference it makes from how it was at the beginning, It is really soaked up, soaked up all of the water nicely and they're still nice and firm. So now what we should do is drain the water so they don't become soggy, okay? You can run them through a sieve as well or you can pick them up with the tongs and transfer them from one bowl to another. This strainer here and just run my noodles through that strainer and put them back in the bowl. The chicken, one of the chicken must definitely be done, one of the breasts I'm using. So I will take that one out and demonstrate the next step, what we're doing with our chicken. Here we go. A few spices came out as well. So now what we're doing, so basically, just tearing it apart, just like this. Thin little strips. And those ones we will need later on to put into our, into our dish, because we're not gonna use a whole breast. And we don't have to chop it into beautiful squares. It's just going to be this pulled version, okay? And once it's cooked, it will just fall apart really nicely and really easily. Beautiful little strips. Wonderful. Now I've got my chicken ready in here. And I will get my large chicken piece out, out as well. And I will strain our broth and then show you how you can dish it up for your family for your dinner. Okay, now I have my strainer here and I'll grab a pot so I can pour in my hot broth through the strainer to retain all of our dried spices and our onion and our ginger. Now this step, you will be handling some very hot liquid. So I recommend you get an adult to help you with this step because that can be quite dangerous, okay? First thing, I'll get my chicken out for later. And now I will grab this broth and pour it through this strainer. Now, I have some of the spices and herbs left in the pot here. And the others are all in here. So for the dish, I have a nice 
a nice clay broth. That's what it looks like. Full of flavor from all of the spices that we just added and cooked together. And also from the chicken, if you have used chicken. But because we use the stock, and if you're completely vegetarian and you're not adding the tofu because you like the taste of tofu, but because you're vegetarian, instead of the chicken stock, you would use vegetable stock. But because vegetable stock is also very concentrated flavor that you're adding, it's not just water, you will also have a nice rich broth for your fro. And now I'm gonna grab a bowl and show you how to present it for your dinner table. So when you're ready and you have all of your ingredients prepared, have it on the table, you can start If you're working with chicken, to add your chicken, just a few little strips, not too many, you're adding your beautiful broth on top. Next part, some noodles. Mix it all in nicely. You can do the chicken and the noodles the other way around as well. You can just do a vegetarian one. So just put the noodles in and then pour the broth on top and then start building it by adding a bit of your fresh beans, your soybeans. And you have your, your fresh greens, you can add them, that didn't chop well. You can add your coriander leaves. Some of your Thai basil that can go in. And if you like it spicy, add a bit of the chili or the jalapenos. And now the ingredient that is also on your recipe is if you want, you can add your hoisin sauce. You can serve it on the table. Everybody can just scoop it with a little bit of teaspoon and add it to your broth. You can also add the fish sauce. You can cook your broth already at the end with the fish sauce, or you can just leave it out and just add it later because the fish sauce is also quite sweet and also the hoisin sauce. Depending on how you like the flavors, I would recommend to just add these sauces at the end, at the very end, depending to your taste. You can, of course, add it already to your broth as the very last step. That depends on you, not the hoisin, but the fish sauce. And the sriracha is also just for flavoring on top once you have it in your bowl. And last but not least, would be squeezing a bit of lime on top. And that's it. If you're doing it vegetarian, use chicken stock. Don't add any meat or add your tofu. So now you would basically grab your silken tofu and just bring it out and add your little cubes into your soup, put them on top. So mine is now <laughs> chicken and tofu. <laughs>